Aloha everyone and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we explore the fascinating world of veganism and the plant-based diet. We are coming live to you from the downtown uh, Think Tech Honolulu studio and we're here with someone that I am honoured to have on my show, a fellow vegan chef, but I would say a very famous vegan chef here, uh, Chef Paul Onishi. Welcome to the show. Nice to be Aloha. here. Aloha. Aloha. I actually just met Paul uh, through, I think you saw my article that was in Crave last yes. week. So I'm so grateful that you got in touch with me. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> face Great. to face. Great. It's it's funny how things work out. Um, Paul, you're a vegan chef here. Yes. And may I ask how long you've been a vegan chef? I would Paul? say about a year. Uh huh. And prior to that, you have been a chef and just cooking regular chef, regular yeah. food, including I want. including <laughs> meat and fish. Yes. 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 So I have to ask the question: Why are you now a vegan chef? Does that mean that you yourself are on a plant-based diet? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. I, um, you might say I got scared into it. My, my health was a personal issue. Yeah. And I um, really didn't care about where I was going. In fact, at mm -hmm. one point in my career, I used to brag about my main mission in life was to find the best osobuko and tiramisu in the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I was serious. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. And now you make vegan versions, I'm sure, of both of those things. Well, it'll be a while till I, f I f find the osobuko, uh, but I think tiramisu is pretty close. Yes. Right well, you know, I titled today's show from something that I stole in your article. You were, Paul, in the Island Vegetarian. I actually printed this out, and it is uh, written, or it's affiliated with the Vegetarian Society of yes. Hawaii, is that correct? Yes. It's a newsletter? Yes. How often does this newsletter come out? Every month. Every month, okay. And you did an article, Paul, that was titled Confessions of a Food Service Professional, Aka Food Abuser, yes. the next chapter. So I did steal your title and I've called today's show Veganize Your World and the uh, the tagline is Confessions of a Food Addict, the next chapter. Yes. <laughs> so you were, a f you, you were a food addict, meaning you ate a lot and a lot of the wrong foods or unhealthy foods, well, in your opinion? you know, when I correct? have my cooking classes, I ask people to hold out their hands and they don't know what exactly they're doing. And I said, okay. imagine, uh, as I explain, imagine two Big Macs, a filet of fish, a large order of fries, and a chocolate shake in your hand. And then they're thinking, well, what is he talking about? I said, well, that's what I used to consume wow. every time I went to the fast food restaurant. Okay. And there were local restaurants where I consumed just as much, if not more. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was um, a typical local meal. Right. And even when I moved to the mainland and went to, you know, fast food restaurants there, mm -hmm. I consumed the same amount of food, mm -hmm. not realizing that even though on the outside I looked a certain way, okay. on the inside, was damaging, you know, I was a walking time bomb, as my doctor told Yeah, me. of course, if you eat like that. And then, you know, everything in our culture is supersized, isn't it? Yeah. And then you think, well, it's only a few extra pennies to get, you know, a larger version. And they kind of, these fast food chains kind of encourage you to, <laughs> to eat more of that bad stuff, I guess. Well, they, it's up they to would you, encourage, though. but I was self-motivated, yeah. I guess, growing up here. Yes. You know, it's kind of like local style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where I would always start off with a portion of rice like this, and everything wow. went on top of that to the point where it was very unstable. Uh -oh. But, you know, that's, what, that's how you eat. Yeah. yeah. You know, and if you don't eat that way, your auntie's always saying, Boy, you didn't get enough, you know? Yes, blame it on the relatives. <laughs> I, I, I totally understand. I come from, uh, my father was Serbian, and my mother is Fijian, actually. Huh, and, interesting. you know, when you get together at a family dinner, it's just all about the food, and yeah. the, the more you eat, the better, you know. The more but, people you make happy. Yes, yeah. yeah. But so now you're in to your next chapter, and you've been vegan for about one year. And a half. Almost, what, sorry, one yeah. year and a half. And uh, what kind of support did you get? You belonged, or you entered a program, I believe. Well, what started it was mm -hmm. I, I uh, 
signed up with Ekahi Ornish. Right. Because it all started when I went to have a tooth extracted, mm -hmm. and the nurse told me that they weren't going to do the surgery because my blood pressure was too high. Of mm -hmm. course, I asked what the blood pressure was high. Yeah. She said 181 over 117. And I had the nerve and the ego to turn around and said, your machine is wrong. I know. Well, that would, and you would be so shocked to, you know, to hear that that is the actual reading yeah, of your I, blood, pl you know, blood pressure. I, first of all, I never even paid attention to my blood right. pressure. So mm. who am I to be, you know, criticizing that? Yeah. And then I said, would you do it again? <laughs> and of course, it, you know, registered even higher. Gosh. And then when I went home later after the surgery, I thought, I'm calm now, you know, should be going down. So mm -hmm. I cuffed myself and I was still up there and it scared me to the point I called my doctor. Mm -hmm. He told me, you need to go on a vegetarian diet right away, which kind of surprised me because he was suggesting that I do this as an initial step. And he told me, mm -hmm. at this point, you probably could have kidney and heart damage. So I'm not going to even put you on any medication until we do a full plant panel of blood work. Mm -hmm. And so it was during that time I was kind of in the gray area waiting for things to happen, tests to come back, right. that I uh, saw the commercial mm -hmm. on TV for this Ornish program. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it related to me. Okay. However, it did cause me to think, like, maybe I'm worse off than I think I am, but, okay. you know, hopefully not. Yeah. But when I went there and got accepted into mm -hmm. the program, I didn't realize that it was going to involve so much of a commitment. For example, exercise. I can never, I can't ever imagine exercising to the extent I do now. Wow. I walked over here mm -hmm. um, in order to do my five miles. I try to do 10,000 plus steps That's a day. That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, and it's, awesome. it's become a, a mission. Mm -hmm. And that tied into. Uh, vegan lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. I was falling off the wagon here and there, like a lot of graduates do, because okay. it is hard. Yes. Yeah, especially after you, once you graduate. So the Ornish program is, it's a nine-week program, is that correct? Yes. So uh, three months about, oh no, so two months, just a little yeah, over two Yeah, we go two, two times a week. Yeah. And okay. uh, we document the amount of carbs, the amount of protein, the amount of... So it's of, very strict. Very strict. Mm. And I even had to take the sheets that we used in class after I graduated mm -hmm. just so I could monitor. You know. Right. However, it doesn't excuse the discipline and the mm -hmm. temptations that occur once you yes. leave mm -hmm. the program. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of people have challenges. Uh -huh. Was it challenging for you? Not really, because oh. I found it interesting... And, and I wanted to veganize things. I got into this thing where... <laughs> yeah, well, you're a chef, so you, you obviously um, are familiar with food to start yeah, with. So yeah. I guess you, you were kind of ahead of everyone in that sense that you, you could sort of make your own food or make it work for you. Make this well, that make your own make food work. thing was only as successful as the products I was mm -hmm. able to get in contact with. And right. I remember probably 10 years before that, mm -hmm. it was very difficult because technology has really taken us, all of us, vegans mm -hmm. and, and vegetarians it into a has. new society. And plus, I think the one thing I see that's refreshing is the way uh, vegans uh, embrace more of a transitional way. I think vegans used to be so strict that, oh, why are you eating that fake hot dog or, mm. you know, fake this and that yep. that's that's trying to tease yourself mm -hmm. however they were ostracizing a lot of people that needed that bridge yes to get to at least a healthy lifestyle yep. so for me the classes i teach now have a lot of transitional mm -hmm. um they, what they call analog or, or okay. um, plant-based meat alternatives mm -hmm. and even now if you go into major food places like down to earth and mm -hmm. whole foods you're going to find six different hot dogs. Yes. Not all of them are good, though. Yeah. And not everything that is put out there that mm -hmm. is so-called vegan cheese, for example, mm -hmm. tastes good. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of people are challenged because mm -hmm. some people still, you know, they, they feel that 
I'm putting out a product and that's the way it is, mm -hmm. but they don't try to duplicate what we're used to. Right. And I think, especially in Hawaii, and I guess based on what I've seen on the mainland, local people are even more about texture. If you don't okay. recreate texture, forget it. They'll turn oh, okay. away and I, I tried it. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Yeah. It's too mushy. Yeah. And that's how it used to be. Mm -hmm. Now you have textures that replicate meat, mm -hmm. uh, sauces. Even I found a vegan cheese mm -hmm. the other day that was off the shelf mm -hmm. that I actually made a grilled cheese sandwich. It was nice. No different. <laughs> no different. Speaking of cheese, Paul, I do want to have a look at this first photo that... Uh, I would like to show you, these are my vegan cheeses, mm. and all of these are made with cashews. Yes. So I, uh, I just, I love the cashew cheeses. Look at the colours. This one of them is made with beetroot. The middle one, the darker one, is actually my chocolate cheese. Really? Yes. And there's uh, roasted garlic and pepper, and the one that, I call it a cashew brie, but, you know, I, maybe I shouldn't be using that term. But it, it, it looks very similar and tastes very sim similar to camembert or brie. Um, and these are all made from cashews. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to taking your <laughs> Thank class. you. I can't wait to, uh, yeah, <laughs> for you to try them as well. So yeah. there's, uh, yeah, you are absolutely correct that the vegan food has just changed, hasn't it? Now there, there really is, um, I shouldn't say no, no excuse to, to transition, but it certainly helps that you have all these really wonderful products that imitate or taste very similar to oh, yeah. the real thing. And I actually read something, I, I don't want to quote where it was from, but um, I did see something on the net recently that said, when it comes to the Beyond Burgers that are just going crazy all over the world, 40% of the people that consume them are, guess what, not vegan. Exactly. So that just goes to show that even people who are not on a plant-based diet are starting to opt for the healthier yeah. versions, which yeah. is really what it's all about. I mean, I mentioned to you earlier when we um, sat down before the show that I'm like you. We're not here to preach to people or try to change people or, you know, we're not some sort of cult that no, is trying no, no. to, no. yeah, you know, everybody has, you know, has their own journey. But what one thing I think both you and I can agree on is that we're here to give you this information on how to lead a healthier life or a healthier lifestyle, and one way to do that is to certainly eat more plant-based foods. Exactly. Yes. So let's take a look at the, another, the next slide. Oh, Paul, this is how, this again is my um, cheese, the article about my cashew cheese cheeses that was in Crave magazine last week on Wednesday, which, was, which is in the Star that's Advertiser. That's the article I, I yes. answered, and that's how I got I into your classes. So, <laughs> isn't it, yeah, isn't it wonderful, like the people that you can meet um, along your journey, even my, my new journey here in Hawaii, meeting you is, um, again, just I'm so glad that we crossed paths. I do want to show you the article because I was actually lucky enough to get on the cover of Crave, which is yeah. always... I guess, been a dream of mine as a chef to be on the cover of a magazine. I want to read to you what the cover says. Cheese whiz. <laughs> isn't, isn't that fancy? A vegan chef produces cheesy dishes without dairy. And there's, it's a four-page article, but, um, yeah, it says, glancing through Lillian Kumick's vegan cheese recipe is like taking a peek behind the wardrobe door into Narnia. <laughs> Jolene Oshiro-san from uh, Crave did the article. She's the food editor, and she just did this wonderful article. So if any of you have this uh, from last week, do take a look at it, and you'll learn a bit more about what I do. Mm -hmm. So that's all about cheeses. And you and I do have some upcoming events that I definitely want to talk about um, after the break. So let's take a little mini break and uh, stay tuned. See you in a minute or so. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you. 
keeping you safe. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Chip Fletcher. I'm at the University of Hawaii School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology. I'm here to tell you about the four key things you can do to combat climate change. Have smaller families, eat a more plant-based diet, drive less, and fly airplanes less. Thank you very much for your time. Welcome back to Lillian's Vegan World, the show all about veganism and the awesome plant-based diet. Today I'm honored to have Chef Paul Anishi with me, who is a vegan chef, a renowned chef. Um, it's so awesome to have you here. I, I love talking to you. Paul, I hope you don't mind. I would like to uh, read just a little paragraph of your article that was in the Island Vegetarian that's uh, put out by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. Um, just the last paragraph, I, I liked what you wrote. You said, quote, when your body gets renewed from the inside out as, as mine did, lifestyle transformation is inevitable. When I look back at my time bomb ready to explode life, I'm humbled by the fact that I was given a second chance, not only to live, but to overflow and make a difference. I used, to say, I used to say I was retired, but now I feel re-fired. I love that. That's I wrote awesome. that, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, I really, it's, I loved what you wrote. I, the whole article is awesome. And I, I think that you can find this article on the internet if you just uh, type in Vegetarian Society of Hawaii newsletter. I think mm -hmm. it's available. So for yes. anyone who's interested, definitely do that. Um, yes. So how do you feel? After 18 months of I doing this. I feel great. Mm -hmm. I, it's interesting how you, you, your mind can be in a different place that you didn't realize. Yeah. Your attitude towards a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, stress is stress. However, when you're healthier in a lot of different areas, you can uh, deal with stress a lot better. Yes, yeah. yeah. It really is a lifestyle. It's, of course, it is, you know, food, it plays an important role in your health, absolutely, without a doubt. But definitely it's all of that. It's the lifestyle that you're leading at the same time. And um, I think, yeah, plant-based diet, it just changes your life, doesn't it? Um, I wanted to, there is a, one of your recipes here, um, Chef Paul, and it's called Chef Paul's Vegan Curried Chicken Salad. And one of the ingredients is, uh, soy chicken. So I understand what that is, but for people, viewers out there who have no idea what that is, can, can you explain this particular ingredient? Well, soy chicken, and uh, curiously enough, I just did a vegan fried chicken in the air fryer recently. Okay. And um, just so my students could have a contrast, I did it a vegan fried chicken baked fried in mm. oil, okay. and also in the air fryer, so they could, they could see three different right. you know, versions of yes. this. Yeah. And I used a vegan egg batter to dip the chicken in. What is a vegan egg batter? It is ve a vegan egg. This, this kind of shows you where technology mm. has come. When I dilute this powder in water, okay. and I have the students smell, they go, Wow, it smells like a volcano, and it's like sulfur. And right. I said, well, that's black salt, mm -hmm. which is harvested near volcanic mm -hmm. areas. They purposely put this in like a tofu uh, egg salad okay. to give you yeah. that feeling that it's really close to yes, being an that, egg that eggy um, yeah. dimension, I guess. Yeah. Right, and these are a lot of the ways that technology is mm -hmm. enhancing yeah vegetarian f products mm -hmm. so that you can come pretty close to hitting what you're used to. And I think that's the main goal of what's happening. Yes. And so for me, that makes me even more excited mm -hmm. because you can enjoy the same things you used to. Yeah. And I think it's only going to get better. Yes. I saw recently the, um, the Impossible Burger people. Yes. Have so much sec success in this area mm -hmm. that they actually have a vegan steak they're working in. Oh, and it kind really? of looks like 
a piece of yeah. meat. Of course, people are going to jump on that one and say, well, why do you even want to tease people like mm -hmm. that? However, if you're one of those people that is used to a regular piece of meat, yeah. mm -hmm. and texturally and taste-wise, mm -hmm. it comes pretty close, mm -hmm. and you know that maybe you're not doing it for health reasons, but what it costs to produce this piece of meat, so-called piece of meat, is in line with helping, you know, cessation of greenhouse gases, exactly. helping the environment. Yes. That's why on the East Coast, all the places where they tested Impossible Burger, mm -hmm. it's going over the top. And it's not because of people who are vegetarian or vegan. They're jumping on because they see a natural help, you know, for the environment. Yeah. You know, doing their part by consuming yeah. less mm -hmm. of what causes these gases to yeah. be present. Exactly. It's, a, it's overall a win-win situation <laughs> when, yeah, you think, when you talk about the plant-based diet. It's good for you, it's healthy, great for the environment, and obviously the animals will thank you for it too. Yes. Um, Paul, let's have a look at the slide. I think we've got some upcoming events that I would love to talk about. You've got hands-on cooking classes. This is where I stole the title for my show today. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. <laughs> So um, Paul is also at Down to Earth on July the 2nd and July the 23rd, and it says that you're making soups, salads, and sandwiches. Then you've got July 9th, Chef Paul's favorite party at the uh, appetizers. That sounds nice. July 18th, local island favorites, the winners. <laughs> Classes are limited to 12 students, so do sign up. Um, you can register with Chef Paul at 808-722-9782. Um, that's great. You have all these events coming up. What a, what, can you just give me a sneak peek into the party ad, appetizers that you're planning to do? Well, when I used to have a catering business, right. one of our favorite appetizers was taking phyllo pastry. I love that stuff. Sautéing spinach, mm -hmm. chopped onion tarragon and feta cheese, mixing it all together as a filling yep. and then rolling it in mm -hmm. with, you know, yes. butter so you get a nice binding. Yep. And there was a time period when I could not produce this because there was no vegan butter substitute like uh -huh. there is now. Yes. And no uh, vegan feta cheese like I just found it down to earth the other day. Oh, really? Yeah, it was actually a vegan feta cheese. Oh. So. There's a catering job I have this Saturday. I'm going to put it right in that menu. Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. That, that is actually called burek in Serbian. It's a, ah. it's a very um, Eastern European dish, I believe. Mm -hmm. the, plate, the layers of spinach, uh, sometimes ricotta and feta mixed right, in together. Right. They also do that with um, potatoes in Serbia. In between that sounds the, good. Yeah, potatoes and spinach. But basically, you can put cardboard in between phyllo pastry and it'll probably taste good right. <laughs> it's one of those it's like spring rolls somehow anything you put in a spring roll and fry it tastes amazing right, right. <laughs> um good luck with those uh, classes and i do look forward to attending one um someday soon let's have a look at another slide now people are going to go what the hell <laughs> is this and what are you thinking Ex well, this please is, do explain. If you want to call it a uh, uh, class opener, this is what I do. You know, most of the students have a recipe I pass out, so they kind of check it out, look mm -hmm. it over, and they kind of know what to expect for the class. But then I pull out a banana. I start, <laughs> you know, taking off the skin. I yep. put the bana actual banana aside, and then I take my fork and I scrape out the skin like mm -hmm. you see in the left-hand side right. picture. Mm -hmm. Then I take my fork. And with the tines, I kind of shred it very liberally and put it in water. I'll put a little liquid smoke and Hawaiian rock salt in mm. there. And I can make Kahlua pork out of banana See, peel. See, that, that is incredible. Um, I believe that this stuff is uh, becoming very popular as a substitute for the pulled pork. Well, the interesting thing about this was that when I actually saw it mm -hmm. uh, first, it was coming from some place in uh, Spain. Really? And the lady that was, you know, demonstrating this, and then right after her was the lady from Japan that had a similar okay. usage. And both of them said, 
in this country, in our country, mm -hmm. this is very common for us to use banana peel. In your country, you just throw it away. So I said, well, I want to see if this stuff works mm -hmm. because I was kind of to toying with jackfruit at the time. Yes. And, and that, I thought, yeah. I want to see an alternative and mm -hmm. see if this actually works. Mm -hmm. So I did that and I was kind of surprised that I could actually take that same banana peel pulled pork and put it in my vegan la la. Mm -hmm. that, that is so inventive, isn't it, when you think about it? And, you know, as you, as you just uh, mentioned, a lot of people did use the jackfruit before this banana peel mm -hmm. pulled pork came about. But, not, you know, jackfruit's one of those things that is not really available in a lot of places. Exactly. But bananas, I mean. Definitely. Yes, they're everywhere. So to, I actually haven't tried this, but I have to give it a try. Just make someday. sure you scrub the outside of the banana peels yes, to yeah. take away whatever. So probably organic would be better, I'm yes, guessing, yeah. if, you, if they're available. Yeah. Let's have a look at another one. Right. That <laughs> looks beautiful. I, look at that scallop on the, on the right-hand side, or scallop as you pronounce them. That, I'm guessing, is an oyster mushroom? Yes. Um, yeah. Well, in, in my class now, I use the trumpet mushroom because the oh. base is a lot wider, so I can uh -huh. come up with a bigger scallop. And um, I put it in a nonstick ceramic mm -hmm. pan. Okay. And I just, just very, very light spray of cooking oil, uh -huh. almost nothing. And I browned both sides. It is gorgeous. I mean, look <laughs> at it. You, you wouldn't know it. It, it wasn't, a, you know, the, from That's the sea. That's when I've actually fooled people. Yeah. And I said, can you try it's beautiful. this? And the, the actual um, composition of the mm -hmm. mushroom is quite a bit like the scallop composition right. that yeah, that's awesome. You know what, Paul? It has been so so wonderful talking to you. We are out of time. I told you we wouldn't get it all in because we just have too Pretty much quick. to talk <laughs> about. So I'm going to have to get you on the show again for sure. Um, good luck with your journey and, of course, with your classes. I, too, have quite a few events this month going on. You can go to Eventbrite and look up vegan cashew cheese making or Go to my website, lillianvegan.com. I'm also on Facebook with the same Lillian Vegan and YouTube channel, Lillian Vegan. So all the details are there. It has been a pleasure my having pleasure. you on we'll the see show. see you in class and at your dinner. Thank you so much. And I'm sure you'll be seeing uh, more of Paul and I somewhere. So thank you very much. Wishing you all an awesome, awesome weekend. And uh, see you in a couple of weeks again. Aloha.